Right. But this Bible has all the answers to clean up the community. That's right. Put us in the right mindset. That's why I'm gonna keep on harping. My brother right here, come here real quick, bro. Hey, you believe in the Bible? All right, look, check this, check this out real quick. Give me Tobit. Listen to this verse real quick, bro. Before you leave, don't, don't, don't run off. Just one verse. I got this. This Bible was taught to us wrong, okay? All right, the Bible was taught to us that, that God is dealing with everybody, but the Bible will tell you something different. Tobit 4 and 12. This is the book of Tobit, chapter 4 and verse 12. Because you're a special people. You're a child of God, child of Israel. Read this. Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. Brother, it says, take a wife of the seed of your father. Take the wife of the seed of your father. All right? What you're doing is called what? It's called whoredom. It's supposed to deal with your nation. All right? God is not with interracial marriages. He's not with the mixing. He's with build your people up to build your nation up to be back on top like he commanded us commanded us to. All right? Go back to what we had. All right? That's, that's, another, that's another law. Did you know that, bro? Oh, you know that? Good. But a lot of people don't know that. People think it's okay because your oppressor taught you to do that thing. But God says don't do it. But a lot of us like to hear that verse. No, not my Jesus. Oh, not my God. But do you believe in the Bible? No, you don't. That's right. We're out here to call our people on their, on their nonsense, man. Get your mind right according to the Bible. Right. My sister's right here. Y'all love God, right? Keep the commandments because God loves you. You're his special people. The way your hair looks right now in this natural form, God made you like that. It's a beautiful thing. That's right. Don't let nobody tell you that your hair is nappy. Oh, it's ugly and dry, can't, it's hard to maintain. God has that same hair. That's why he said you're a special people, a beautiful people. That's why we're out here to build up our people because you don't hear that. A lot of, a lot of single women out here with no husbands. No husbands out here, no one to guide them. Everybody said I want to be an independent woman, I can do it on my own, I got money, I get this. But then when they start breaking in people's houses, who gonna protect you? Right. You don't want a man there then. Who gonna lead your children? Who gonna teach your man to be a man? To not be effeminate. Right. Who gonna teach your daughter not to be a, like a man, to act like in a manly manner? I got no, but no, 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 get that. Give me Isaiah 58. The brother said, no, you didn't know that, bro, because cause listen, they'll say, you're talking too harsh. Stop yelling at the people. Don't tell them like that. But that's what we're taught in church, right? We're gonna tell you what the Bible says. I'm gonna keep harping on it. We're teaching what the Bible says. Right. Everything we're saying can be found where? In the Bible. So I'm only gonna do what the Bible says. Read this. This of the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. Bring it out. Cry aloud. It says, cry aloud. That's why we're out here to project our voices. So everybody can hear this message that God sent. Go ahead. Spare not. It says, spare not. I'm not sparing nobody of my people. I'm not care. I don't really care about the other nations. I don't, that's not, I'm not here for them. They're good. They're in their kingdom right now. It's our people that's suffering. All right. It's our people that get shot down in the street. Our people are the ones that get the lowest jobs, have to work the longest, get treated like the worst on, on this planet. We're out here for our people. Read that part again. Cry aloud, spare not. We're not sparing nobody's feelings. Go ahead. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. He said to lift up my voice like a trumpet. Go ahead. And show my people their... Show who? My people. Who? My people their transgressions. We're out here to show our people their transgressions according to the Bible. That's it. It's plain and simple. So when you say that, you didn't know, bro. Now do you want us to keep on continuing to follow what God says, right? Yeah, hey, that's what we're going to do, bro. There's a lot of people that walk past this and say, oh, I don't want to hear that stuff. That's cool. Not, that's, hey, I did what I'm supposed to do. The Lord said, come on, teach your people whether they hear or forbear. If they want to hear it, let them keep walking. I'm going to do what God says because if I don't, Leviticus 5 and 1. Leviticus 5 and 1 is a judgment for everything. Right now, we have, it's like we have a gun to our head. Because we woke up to the truth, we have to come out and teach our people. Right. We don't have no other options. If we don't, we're going to die. With everybody else in America breaking God's laws. We have no choice but to be out here. Read this. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 5, verse 1. Now remember, you're, hitting, you're learning a lot of stuff right now. Everything you're learning right now is more than you ever learned in the church, I, I guarantee. It. We're teaching you laws according to the Bible. Go ahead. And if a soul sin. If a soul sins, hold that. Give me sin. Because remember, people say that the laws are done away with, right? People say the laws are done away with. That's what Christianity teaches, okay? We're going to show you that's, that's a lie according to the Bible. All right, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. All right? And, look, and I want you, if you had a phone, I wish you could type some of these scriptures down so you can read them for yourself, man. Everything we're saying, we want you to go for your everything. That's what I'm talking about. All praises. Read that. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Now remember, we're talking about sin. Whosoever committeth sin, 
transgressive also the law. So it says if you commit sin, you're transgressing the law. That means you're breaking a law. Go ahead. But sin is the transgression of the law. So there can't be no all the laws are done away with because we're still sinning. If you're sinning, you're doing what? You're breaking the laws of God. Right. So we have to abide by the laws. Go back to 5 and 1. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 5 and verse 1. Bring it out. And if a soul sins, if a soul sins, break the laws of God, and hear the voice of swearing, and in a witness whether it hath sinned or know of it. Read that again. Whether he have sinned or know of it. So if we seen it or someone told us what happened, go ahead. If he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. What did that just say? It says, if I see my brother sinning, or I hear my brother sinning, and I don't say nothing to him or report it, I'm going to bear his iniquity. That's what the Bible says. That's why when they say in the hood, no snitching, man, I ain't snitching, man, I ain't doing that, you're breaking the laws of God. Because God says, if you see something, you better say it. If I see drug dealers in my community, you best believe I'm going to speak up. That's right. Because if I don't say nothing, what's going to happen? More drugs are going to be flowing through my community. What's going to happen then? More mothers are going to be doped out on crack not raising their kids. And that's how we get in these, in these situations. That's how our people suffer worse than anybody. There'll be more drug dealers in here shooting each other, uh, sleep with everybody's uh, women, not marrying them. More horrors gonna happen into our communities. Give me that in Daniel. I think it's Daniel 9 and 25. Verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. So it says Israel broke the laws of God. All of us have. Go ahead. Even by departing, that they might not obey the voice. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Because we didn't want to keep the laws of God. God cursed the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. There's a curse on us till this day. Right. Go ahead. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. All right, so this is the point right here, verse 12. And he hath confirmed his word, which he spoke against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. So there's going to be a great evil brought up against the children of Israel. Or a great evil. Go ahead. For under the whole heaven. Under this whole heaven on this earth. Go ahead. Have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. So there's no evil that's been done to us. It's never been done to anybody else. Let me get that judgment. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 28. Because remember I said we're a cursed people. I'm going to show you. Deuteronomy 28, start at verse 15, and we're going to go through these curses to show you who you are, brother. Because I thought I was an African-American. But if you go do the history, Africa is a Leo Scipio Africanus, a Caucasian man, right? That's one of the names. Then you got the other name, America. Americo Vespucci, another Caucasian. Can two Caucasian men come together and have children? They can't do it, right? It's impossible. So the same way we cannot be African-Americans, we are not from them. We have a name. Our name was taken from us. Why? Read this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. This is when Moses had us in the wilderness. All right, we had just been freed from Pharaoh. He said, it shall come to pass. If thy will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee, this day. So God says if we don't listen to him, if we don't follow his laws, like if you have your daughter, you said, come in by 7 o'clock, and they don't, there's going to be a judgment for that, right? Same way it's a judgment for us. Read that. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Remember, we just heard that. We're cursed. We're going to be cursed. The Bible repeats itself. All right? We'll get you one curse. 32. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It says, your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people. Now, what do you think that happened then? Slavery. Remember, you've seen Roots, 12 Years of Slaves, Amistad, you ain't never seen the movie? I don't look at slavery. Hey, look, I know it, it sucks. It's a, it's a harsh reality. I know. But but you understand what happened to our people, right? How our families were broken up. And if you, you, had your, you had kids, right? You had, I saw your daughters. Your daughter take it and she thought to a whole other state. Yeah, no, I, I know. You already know what I'm yeah, talking about. But so I just don't watch no, no, I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. The Bible saying the same exact thing, and that's what exactly what happened. Read that again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. I know you don't like looking at the movies because it's, you ain't need to look at the movies. You know what's in your head, you know the history. Our sons and our daughters will be given to another people and we can't do nothing to get them back. Give me verse 64. 64. 
All these curses, everything I'm listening on the curses that are put upon us, that's going to identify who we are in this day today because remember, we lost who we were. The, the, our oppressor beat our heritage, our customs, who we are out of us right. and made, them, made us learn what they do. Go ahead. Verse 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. So it says you're going to scatter the Israelites all across this world. There's not a, there's not a country, there's not a place on this earth that our people are not. They're not, not, they're not in. And we're in captivity right now. Read that. And there thou shalt serve other gods. We're going to serve other gods because remember, our God is a doesn't look like this. Right? You know that, right? But now when we came over here in slavery, we got to beat out of us. And now we we all think that God looks like that. That Christ is a white man with blue eyes. He loves everybody. We prove that's a lie though. Alright? Real quick, where's your father on this sign? In verse 16. Would, it be, would your father be a so-called African-American, a Jamaican, a Haitian, Puerto Rican, Cuban? What is it? What is it? Oh, good. I like it even better. But what, what tribe is he from? Is he African-American? So, is, would he be a so-called African-American? All right, so you would be from the tribe of Judah then. What about you? Judah? What about you? Guess who else came from Judah? Christ. Right? Now, my brother. Y'all stay right here real quick. Hey, my brother, check this out. Verse 68. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So he said he's going to bring us into Egypt. We're going to get to the definitions. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. So listen, y'all listen closely because um, what we're going over right now, what's going to happen to our people. Now, our people back under Moses, because you descend from the same people, right? You're Israelites. So under Moses, you know this. Good, good. So under Moses, he, he saved us from the Egyptians and brought us out to the, to the wilderness. Now, right now, God is going over commandments with us, right? And curses. Read it again. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. Listen to what Egypt means. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So remember, God brought us out of the land of Egypt. He's going to tell you what Egypt means. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means bondage. Why does it mean bondage to the Israelites? Because we serve hardcore captivity. That's why every time we hear Egypt, we think of slavery for us because we served it. Same way, put it this way. If I took, if you look at a pillow, what is a pillow used for? Sleep on it, right? If, if, when you see a pillow, oh man, I can't wait to go to sleep in my nice bed. I feel comfortable, right? But in that same matter, if you saw, if you took that pillow and somebody killed every member of your family with that pillow, from now on your high, when you see that pillow, in your mind, when you see the, a pillow, what you gonna think of? Death, you, you gonna hate that pillow. That's the same thing we think of when we think of Egypt. We heard Egypt in our minds, we thought of captivity because we served that for over 400 years. Right. All right, now go back to Deuteronomy 28. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Now remember, don't forget what the word Egypt means. Read it now. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. What does Egypt mean? Bondage, slavery. Go ahead. Again with ships. With what? With ships. We're gonna go into slavery, but this time we'll go into slavery on what? Ships. Did we come over here on a, on a plane, on first class, you know what I'm saying? Or did we come over here on the nice, the, the big cruise boats, with all the party and everything, all the, all the drinks, and we was in a good estate, right? You said, oh, we wasn't? How we get over here? We're like, what was our state like? It was horrible. It was, you all see the pictures right here? That's why I'm glad y'all got them. Look at all these pictures right here. That's how we came over here in shackles. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.